turn your mic on, or do you want me to leave it off until you need it? Okay. All right. Good evening, and welcome to the Council meeting of the 25th of November 2019. We are using Facebook Live streaming on Facebook Live, and there is no live interaction, but you may leave comments. The most up-to-date meeting package is on Town of Kentville website. This meeting is called to order. Have all of the councillors received and reviewed their meeting packages? Does any member of council have information pertaining to a matter before this council which has not been publicly circulated? I will remind members of council that we are in decision making mode and we should be mindful of our decision making wheel. We have committed to making balanced and respectful decisions and adhering to our code of conduct. We will be voting by electronic ballot on all matters except administrative. Are there any conflict of interest issues we should be aware of before the meeting commences? CAO Rice, could you please take the roll call? Yes, Your Worship, everyone is presently accounted for. Thank you. You have before you a proposed agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? There's one addition, Your Worship, under in Candler and sale of property. Thank you. So that's 9B. We'll have land. Councillor Gerard. Um, thank you, Worship. Just, I had a short conversation with um, Jennifer and Carla, and I wonder if I might add, I don't know whether it would be under new business or old business, but just about um, the, the PA system. Either, either where we stand on it, or because I know it's been on our agenda, and it seems to be one of those things that we've been talking about for three years that people constantly say, I can't hear, and it's sideways and stuff like that. And okay. Uh, do we want to put that under unfinished business since you say that it's been here before? Yep. Thank you. All right. So a 4D is a sound system or audio. I guess it's an audio system. Audio system in chamber. All right. If I could have a motion to accept the additions, please. So moved. Eric, thank you. Deputy Mayor, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. You have before you the council meeting minutes of October 28, 2019, and they've been distributed. Are there any errors or omissions to those minutes? If not, the minutes are approved as distributed. If yes, the recording secretary will annotate the minutes in red, and the annotated minutes will be added to the electronic meeting file. Moving on. All right, we have uh, business arising from unfinished business, and the first item is Town Hall Security Audit. CAO Rice, if uh, you could review the results of the security audit completed by the Kentville Police Service to improve security in Town Hall. So your worship and council, um, as we had uh, talked about it at the last meeting at CAC, there was a, a an audit that was completed has been circulated to all of you um, as noted in my report that um, at this time um, staff would um, also look at just proceeding with the hiring of the sorry um, with the hiring of the uh, commissioners in the short term until um, we can uh, look at the longer term and and, um, and uh, more permanent solutions that are recommended in the security audit and that probably should take place during the uh, uh, budget deliberations for the 2021 uh, fiscal year um, but in the short term the core commissioners would certainly um, uh, do what we need to do with regards to security Excellent. Thank you. So we have a staff uh, recommendation to have the Commission Air Corps provide security services during public meetings such as Council and Council Advisory Committee meetings beginning in December of 2019. And further, this expense is additional to the approved 2019-2020 operational budget. And further, that Council consider the recommendations from the security audit of Town Hall during the 2020-2021 budget deliberations. Thank you. Second. Thank you. 
It's been moved and seconded that Council approve staff's recommendation to have the Commission Heirs Corps provide security services during public meetings such as Council and Council Advisory Committee meetings beginning in December 2019. And further, this expense is additional to the approved 2019-2020 operational budget and further that Council consider the recommendations from the security audit of Town Hall during the 2020-2021 budget deliberations. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve staff's recommendation to have the Commissioner's Corps provide security services during public meetings such as council and council advisory committee meetings beginning in December of 2019. And further, this expense is additional to the approved 2019-2020 operational budget and further that council consider the recommendations from the security audit of town hall during the 2020-2021 budget deliberations. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to our next uh, item of business, uh, the Dalhousie University Mentoring Plus program. CAO Rice, could you please review the results of your discussion with Gordon Michaels with regards to the Mentoring Plus program? So there was a um, presentation made by uh, Mr. Michaels to council at, at an earlier uh, meeting. Um, I reviewed those that particular proposal with him. Um, there are still some, uh, as I state in my report, there are still some questions that are outstanding. Uh, I think those questions will get answered as we move forward in the process. Um, we have, uh, I have a, a conference call scheduled for um, this week uh, with the CAO with the town of Truro and with Mr. Michaels, uh, Turo had some of the same questions as what we had. Um, as I indicated in uh, my report that um, there's, there's more of a commitment there than I think what was originally um, anticipated, not so much as, as a monetary commitment, but um, a commitment from council themselves to participate uh, you know, in the planning of the um, of the program and and uh, and so um, what I am recommending is that at this point in time that um, you know subject to the signing of the sub agreement which is what we still have a few questions with and they will be answered within the next few days that council agree to participate in the program excellent Thank you very much. So we have a motion that the Town of Kentville agrees to participate as a collaborating organization with Dalhousie University on behalf of the College of Continuing Education as contemplated by the New Horizons for Senior Program Pan-Canadian Project Funding Agreement dated October 21st, 2019 between Dalhousie University and Her Majesty the Queen in Right of Canada as represented by the Minister of Employment and Social Development and as further described in the sub-agreement to be executed by the town and Dalhousie University. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that Council approve participation as a collaborating organization with Dalhousie University on behalf of the College of Continuing Education as contemplated by the New Horizons for Seniors Program Pan-Canadian Project Funding Agreement dated October 21st, 2019 between Dalhousie University and Her Majesty the Queen in Right of Canada as represented by the Minister of Employment and Social Development and as further described by the sub-agreement to be executed by the town and Dalhousie University. Discussion? Uh, Councillor Savage, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, where it says there that one of the coordinators has already been hired in the town of New Glasgow, will, it, will there be a coordinator required for Truro, New Glasgow, and Kentville? So just uh, for, New or for Truro and Kentville, New Glasgow has uh, seconded one of their employees into that position. Okay. And so they, and they're not going to backfill that person's position. So they already have their coordinator oh, in I place. See. We will have to go through that process. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Your Worship. Certainly. Just had a question. 
is it intended that the subagreement come back to council for ratification? It will if there's anything that's outstanding that doesn't fit within what's in the report. I, I'm, I'm just looking at the resolution and it's uh, as we've come to learn recently the uh, precision around the resolution could become important and um, uh, so I'm just wondering if some language should be added to the end there um, uh, just taking a stab here and is further described in the subagreement to be executed by the town and Dalhousie University to be returned to council for approval if and then I looked to the CAO as to the language that she had suggested. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a very wordy resolution as it is. I, I'm not trying to make it more complicated. I'm just trying to make sure that it's clear the, uh, when it's to come back, when and if it's to come back to council for approval. And maybe it's not something that has to come back to council for approval. Um, but uh, the agreement doesn't exist today and if, and I don't know this, if it's an agreement that requires mm -hmm. Council's approval, um, uh, then, it, uh, then it should come back. So how about I don't to know enough about the program. How about to be returned to Council for final approval? Because what this sub-agreement does is it enables the funding flow to start to Dalhousie University and they need they need us on board with a resolution and this is the resolution that was provided by the government to make it their legal ease so if we say um, uh, a friendly amendment to be returned to council for final approval okay. because if it comes cool. back and it's not what we intended or expected we still have have a way out Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. If, if today is not intended to be the final okay on it, then that absolutely works. Okay. So to my uh, mover and seconder, to be returned to council for final approval, is that satisfactory to both of you as uh, making the motion and the second? Okay. We'll take that as a friendly um, amendment. So is there any further discussion? So are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve participation as a collaborating organization with Dalhousie University on behalf of the College of Continuing Ed Education as contemplated by the New Horizons for Seniors Program Pan-Canadian Project Funding Agreement dated October 21st, 2019 between Dalhousie University and Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Canada as represented by the Minister of Employment and Social Development and as further described in the sub-agreement to be executed by the town and Dalhousie University to be returned to council for final re approval. And voting is now open. And voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. Thank you. And I really liked saying the whole part about Queen and Right of Canada. Just want to put that out there. Okay, CAO Rice, our next piece of business is uh, on pace. If you could uh, update us on that matter, please. Your Worship and Council, um, again, um, <coughs> this has been uh, discussed and brought to Council. There was a presentation made at the um, last uh, CAC uh, meeting by Equilibrium Engineering. And um, <coughs> as you can see by my report, um, there is some hesitation on the part of staff with regards to this um, program because of the nature of the cost. So, so there is, at this time, there is no FCM funding that finances these projects. The FCM funding that's available was to set up the programs. Um, <coughs> you know, if you're setting up a, Equilibrium had got a $5,000 grant um, from FCM to uh, set up this program and to, to gain membership, <coughs> so to speak, with, with the municipalities in the area. Um, 
at this time, uh, you know, they're they're proposing 60 to 80 homeowners um, at a minimum cost of twelve thousand dollars each, which, you know, you're looking at between seven and nine hundred thousand dollars a year of amounts funding that ha would have to be amortized over potentially a 10-year period on the tax bills. So as I said in my report, uh, I think that there's can cause issues with cash flow um, to the municipality. Um, we certainly um, can do this program on our own without being members of, with equilibrium engineering. Um, but I would suggest as, as, as a recommendation is that we maybe step back, look at this, and potentially look at um, in our next budget deliberations of maybe setting up a reserve fund that we could build for um, a couple of years and then use that reserve fund to finance some of these, pro these projects and that way w there isn't a real impact to um, our operating cash flow. Thank you. So we have a, um, a recommendation that Council consider participating in a PACE program when there is funding available from FCM or other sources that can be used to finance the homeowner's projects. If I could have a motion, please. I'm not here. Wish Mike just jumped in. Uh, I'm not sure the recommendation is actually looking for Council to make a decision. Th that's really a decision not to do anything at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So unless unless the resolution comes forward to take action, this is simply a report from staff that doesn't require any action. Okay, perfect. Um, Councillor Pulsifer. Uh, thank you. Um, it reads potentially 60 to 80 homeowners participating. Um, would it be possible to have less homeowners participate and thus the cost not be as great as stated here? Or is there a, is, is a guarantee that we have to have 60 to 80 home, home uh, owners to make this work? Or? No, absolutely not. You can, you can mm -hmm. set the parameters yourself. And I guess that's why for, that was the presentation that was made by Equilibrium. Yes. yes. Um, but we certainly have the um, authority and to set our own parameters mm -hmm. and set up our budgets. And that's why I suggest we just take a step back and, and look at this again. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bolland. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, my comment was on the same line. I mean, they said that they thought there might be about 10 homeowners in Berwick interested. There's no reason why we can't scale it down to at least get our foot in the door. Maybe we can say we will we'll do up to 10. Um, in the coming year but again I think it is a budget issue certainly but mm -hmm. you know they, they are up for profit business let's face it but um, when we looked at this with the former council we did pass a bylaw and the initial goal then was up to about 10 homeowners um, so as mm -hmm. Councillor Paulsper said I don't think we need to look at 60 to 80 but mm -hmm. just a little bite but again it is a budget issue certainly even at 10 so and your bylaw allows you to set your own parameters with yeah. it. Councillor Savage. Um, it's more around uh, FCM having funding through FCM. Have we heard anything on it if they may look to participate in the 2020 year, set up any kind of funding for it, or is that not even on the horizon? The, their intention is not to finance these projects, right. but just to have smaller grants that would allow a municipality to help set up the program, but their intention is not to fund it. Yeah, and I think that's an important note because uh, depending <coughs> on how high you go or how many homeowners you have participating, it, it could be, as you say, a sizable amount of money. And, uh, and when even though we tax the respective homeowners, there's that option that they may not return the funds back, right? Yeah, there's that piece of it. So, okay, that's helpful. Yeah, okay. Councillor Maxwell. I'm just wondering um, if uh, Equilibrium would look at uh, pre-sign up. So having people sign up prior to us making a commitment on it, then we might actually get a number and or we can set that number, but would they, do you know if they would be interested in a pre-sign up? 
so that they I haven't had the conversation with them yeah. but yeah. I certainly can yeah maybe uh, it's taxpayers dollars and of course we want to be very careful about where we spend those so um, that's why I was thinking maybe uh, like a pre sign up might be might be something you could look at Deputy Mayor thank you worship um, just for clarification because I think it might have been brought up um, at CAC when we discussed it um, I think somebody asked the director of finance about the investment fund and I believe her answer was um, we would make more money in interest on the investment fund than we would pay in interest borrowing from um, uh, Nova Scotia finance or Canada finance um, I, I would certainly like to see something you see Bridgewater doing things you see Berwick doing things um, I, I this would be a start but at the end of the day it comes down to taxpayers money and thank you I, I think the other point and uh, and Councillor Ball and made it is is that we do have the bylaw in place so we don't actually need equilibrium to to do this or to um, put it out there the the one thing with with equilibrium is originally when they presented to us it was to do the the grant proposal going to the FCM and that's not occurring now so really if we hire them or were to look at them to do this job we would actually have to go out to tender because if you think about it they're taking five percent of potentially nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars right off the top and that is more than our uh, our, our process uh, allows us to do sole source uh, without tendering so we would uh, we would have to put a proposal out for tender but um, be assured that our pace uh, bylaw gives us everything that we need to to put this uh, this into place and uh, and as Councillor Maxwell said um, it's uh, it's it, it would be easy enough for us as uh, as a town to go out and uh, and see if people are, are interested in it and uh, one of uh, one of the things uh, that the CAO had mentioned uh, is uh, is that other towns are helping people fill in applications for uh, things like um, the um, the energy uh, energy efficiency efficiency Nova Scotia and as well lower lower income people can can access uh, money through Nova Scotia housing uh, for uh, for upgrades to their um, uh, insulation and window installations so perhaps you know that's as as deputy mayor said that's where we stick our foot in the door is in these programs that we can assist our residents in uh, in getting a hold of Deputy Mayor. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I, th I think when e Equilibrium was here, basically they talked about heat pumps. This was a, so what's the difference between us financing over 10 years or anyone can go to Nova Scotia Power yeah. and f I, you know, if, if the product's already out there, why doesn't Kenful look at doing something? And that's exactly what we could do as, you know, different. as part of our, uh, our green plan. Uh, you know there's there's no reason why we couldn't I love the idea of giving people uh, a hand in filling you know the paperwork out and, mm. and and giving them a shove in which direction they need to go to get what it is they want but yeah. if we're just repeating something that they can you know mm. get from a, a, a much larger entity than us exactly um, and a better interest rate as well yeah yeah thank you thanks Councillor Bolland Thank you. So that being said, I'd, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion that why do, can we not consider up to 10 units? The, the problem I have with uh, equilibrium not taking their 5% is that <clears throat> my history with this project with the last term, last government, is that it stalled on the desk of staff. Um, the bylaw was passed, everything was laid out, and it died on someone's desk. I'm not going to mention who. Um, so I don't have a lot of faith right now that that ball won't get moving. Of course, we have a different administration to get that ball moving, but 5% might be a small cost to pay with the equilibrium if they have the experience. But, you know, maybe staff can look at up to 10 units, what that's going to cost us. And maybe it's a budget issue, maybe it's not, but I don't want to close the door on it yet. But. 
Your Worship, the, certainly. The um, there is a budget imp budget implication because Equilibrium wanted to start in January, and none of it was budgeted in in this fiscal year that we're working on. So, um, I mean, we certainly can look at it if you want us to. Um, move forward but I would suggest that perhaps it might be better to look at the b upcoming budget for the next fiscal year um, because we we have had some overages this year that weren't planned to date um, and we haven't gotten through winter yet um, but whatever your direction is Councilor Bolling. Yeah, no, I accept that because I know we're in a small deficit right now, too. <laughs> I just don't want us to cl close the door on equilibrium or any opportunities there are with them, with Berwick and the rest of them. So um, if you're comfortable with that, that mm. I just don't want to miss the boat with equilibrium if there's any opportunities with them, with that collective group mm -hmm. that we can miss. But certainly it's a budget issue. We, ha we are in a deficit right now. So um, I think we do have to wait the budget time. Mm. But I just want to be thorough about this. and give it the best shot we can so. so your direction is that we plan for the next fiscal year or yeah. that we move forward with this one so I think the other thing uh, counselor is is that we do have the opportunity as we look at our strategic plan again and and we really flesh out the part about our you know our green plan our environmental and and I think that that's a really great opportunity for us to uh, to do all the green things we we've talked about and uh, and to really show uh, show how we can make a, a change so that's satisfactory all right all right we have we're moving on to our recommendations arising from the CAC meeting and they will be present oh sorry I did write it down um, so audio audio system for the chamber uh deputy mayor i'm going to uh put you on the spot here um so yeah I, it, this is something we've been talking about basically since day one <coughs> when a lot of us used to come in and attend meetings before we were on council and if you look back so usually after meetings i go home and i watch the facebook live just to see what people are commenting and we're still three years into it getting can't hear turn the volume up um, talk to people who sit usually at the back of the room we can't hear and it was it it was whether it was a, a budget item before I know you and I had talked about it when we were at uh, FCM and we saw at least the uh, the uh, the voting microphones is that still on our radar is it something that's gone and I realize we're in a deficit and it's probably not a top priority we're always on the list but we're always at the bottom of the list so this this room uh, you know I mean we we've talked about about redesigning it and if you look at what's clued together back here to to make our system yes. uh, you realize that it's leftovers from the 1970s yeah. and uh, this is what Jennifer and I discussed it, and exactly it's, it's it seems like something that would be a very small thing that is is a constant annoyance um, and a small thing to fix now I know that the budget implication is not as small as throwing some speakers and stuff in but exactly but I think uh, I think the CAO is very open to uh, us uh, sitting down and, and talking about our, our wish list so maybe uh, maybe since we can't get this from Santa Claus we have to wait till our April 2020-2021 uh, budget so uh, can we move it uh, to yep. uh, pu push it to the CAO uh, to get Jason, uh, our I'll IT guy, on the job? I'll and call then her every day. <laughs> you see how thrilled she is I with that already? Now? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you. But we always come in last. I mean, you've got kids, you know. They get first all right so that covers off all of our unfinished business and uh, moving on to our recommendations and reports and uh, they will be presented by Councillor Pulsifer let me turn on your mic thank you 
Uh, the first recommendation um, is, at, is for external audit services. Uh, so at the November 12, 2019 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director <coughs> excuse me, Kroll presented her recommendation for external services. Five companies expressed interest and one company submitted a proposal for financial audit services and was recommended by the Finance Department for a five-year term. Council Advisory Committee recommended that Kent and Duffett be retained for external auditing service for the five-year period from April the 1st, 2019 to March 31st, uh, 2024. Annual reappointment will be contingent on Council's satisfaction with performance and fees, among other things. Fees for each year are as follows. Year ended March 31st, 2020, uh, $17,700 plus HST. Year ended March 31st, 2021, $18,050 plus HST. Year ended March 31st, 2022, $18,400 plus HST. Year ended March 31st, 2023, was $18,750 plus HST. <coughs> Year ended March 31st, 2024, equals 19,100 plus HST. I so move. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, dear. Oh. Uh, Debbie, Bear, could you take <coughs> the chair? Okay, wherever. Um, so I have my light I, on. I'll just ask because I do first, second, and discussion. Just a question around. Um, Performance and fees, among other things. What what other things would there be? <laughs> uh, oh. I'm just trying to find where it is. Yeah. So it so it just says Kent and Duff will be retained yeah. for external auditing services. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Annual reappointment will be contingent on council satisfaction with performance and fees, among other, other things. things. I, I just I don't know what that means. And perhaps it's not that important. Yeah, I I can't answer that, uh, Councillor. Then I would move that we amend it, take it out. I, I don't I don't like that in there. Among other things, I don't know what it means. Okay, we'll just amend. It. Yeah, vote on that. Yeah, I would move that we just strike among other things. Question? All in favor for the recommendation to. Did you have a. No, sorry, I just didn't know if we were doing a show of hands for the amendment. No, or, no, we have to vote. With this. Yeah. 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 So can I just get a clarification on that? It was first moved by Lynn and Eric. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then who moved it the second time? The, the recommend the Kate made the amendment. Kate made the amendment. Kate made the amendment. Second Kate? amendment. And I guess Kate? I should have asked if you're okay with the amendment. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and who seconded? I did. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So just to clarify, Jennifer, are you going to put it on the screen to vote on the amendment yep. or are we voting on the amendment in form? Yep, it just takes me a minute to okay. put the text in, so I... Just trying to help the deputy mayor. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at external she audit services. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think she's got... Oh, oh, I think she's going to the... Oh, okay. Oh, she's taking a picture of here. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So we can vote on that? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'll move on to the uh, second no, rec. No, no, we need have to have to vote on Oh, the sorry. <laughs> so that's the amendment. Okay. <laughs> Amendment 
things very often, so. <laughs> You're doing great. Does anybody have a lozenge? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> the deputy uh, mayor, get in there. What? <laughs> oh, she can. Not for me. Probably, maybe. Might be good for her to have one at the. Better not leave your chair in the room. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm over there. So, I'm ready for the <laughs> motion to be made and the second. Okay. Is it? Yeah. So, you've already right. got that. Mm. Lynn and Karen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that was prior to the amendment. They made the motion. They made the motion to accept the uh, the original service. Of yeah. Yeah. Deputy Mayor has lost. You might want to take one. Mm. Sure. <laughs> oh, you didn't. Uh, we're, we're there. No. We're moving. There was an amendment to the resolution. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> That's a good one. Mm. I, I just didn't like the portion that said amongst other things. Uh, I oh. didn't know. I just didn't know what that meant. I didn't. So we're voting on that is without <coughs> other things, mm -hmm. so that's up right now. Mm -hmm. And motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, the second recommendation, re-council meeting dates. At the November 12th, 2019 meeting of the Council Advisory Committee, CAL Rice reviewed the proposed dates for Council and CAC meetings in uh, 2020. Council Advisory Committee recommended that Council approve the Council cha uh, calendar for the meeting dates in uh, 2020. I so move. It's been moved and seconded that the Council approve the Council calendar for meeting dates in 2020. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the council calendar for meeting dates in 2020. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried, thank you. Uh, the next recommendation to Council is the King's Regional Emergency Management Organization Winter Storm Plan. At the November 12, 2019 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Dan Stovall, King's Regional Emergency Management Coordinator, gave a presentation about the King's Remo proposed winter storm plan, which will improve coordination between municipal units around winter storm events. Mayor Snow reviewed the King's Remo proposal for a coordinated winter storm plan for the King's region. Council Advisory Committee recommended that Council approve the attached Regional Emergency Management Support Plan, Winter Storm Preparedness and Response Plan, dated September 2019, from the King's Regional Emergency Management Organization. I so move. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that the Council approve the Regional Emergency Management Support Plan, Winter Storm Preparedness and Response Plan, dated September 2019, from the King's Regional Emergency Management Organization. Is there any discussion? Question. The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the Regional Emergency Management Support Plan, Winter Storm Preparedness and Response Plan, dated September 2019, from the King's Regional Emergency Management Organization. Voting is now open. <clears throat> Voting is now closed and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, the next recommendation to Council uh, regarding the Kentville Lions Club lease. After the November 12, 2019 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, the Kentville Lions Club lease was discussed during an in-camera session. Currently, the Lions Club leases the building at 78 River Street from the town 
but the lease for this arrangement expired in 2015. Council Advisory Committee recommended. That council recommend renewal of the lease at 78 River Street with the Kenfield Lions Club for a period of three years commencing uh, the 1st of December 2019. I so move. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that Council approve the renewal of the lease at 78 River Street with the Kentville Lions Club for a period of three years commencing the 1st of December 2019. Is there any discussion? Hey, I, just, oh. just as a reminder, just as a reminder, uh, this lease is at less than fair market value, so it takes a special majority of Council. Thank you. Councilor Gerard. Or, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, there was, and I, I won't mention them because it was an in-camera, but there was a couple of maintenance items that we talked about. Are they have been taken care of or? They have. Yes, okay. they have. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the renewal of the lease at 78 River Street with the Kentville Lions Club for a period of three years commencing the 1st of December 2019. Voting is now open. voting is now closed and the motion is carried thank you all right we will thank you councillor Pulsper we will move on to our reports and the reports will be added to the public record under a single motion at the end of the presentations and starting with uh, deputy mayor I have no idea why I've got that. Okay, Councillor Andrew, sorry. Uh, can you make that a little larger? I didn't bring my glasses, so I can't really see, see well very well on my computer. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, King's Transit, uh, we did not have another meeting officially. However, lots of discussions going on between uh, various partners in terms of ways we can uh, potentially uh, great leadership there with the GM and uh, I think some creative new ideas that I hope uh, one day soon we can we can uh, be have on the table here um, NSFM was uh, great I threw put some highlights there um, I think the uh, highlight it was not as busy as and rushed as some conferences we've uh, been part of um, but good nonetheless and um, and lots of good uh, connection with other people from other units around the province. Um, I, um, even though it's not not covered by this date, we, we have had a. Uh, I can I don't know if I should wait till until next meeting. We did have on Thursday. We had a um, was it Thursday or Wednesday. We had a joint fire service meeting, um, and so I I can wait until sure. next wait yeah. until next month. Okay. Um, and uh, meet and greet. Of course, we uh, met and had a chat, an informal kind of chat with uh, our new CAO, and that was good and, and I think hopeful and got our things flowing afresh. Um, Remembrance Day service was uh, was terrific and touching and, and terrific crowd. Um, um, invited to speak to housing needs. Um, the NDP. Yeah, party is having a uh, kind of meetings around the province to try to I guess develop a housing around uh, or a platform perhaps for next election um, and uh, from my perspective I, I spoke into some of that and devour uh, I think was a highlight probably for everyone who was there um, exceeded expectations uh, mm -hmm. by far it was more than more than certainly more than double uh, more than twice as good as the the, the first year, and and uh, look forward uh, already as many people do to to, uh, to next year, and and I can't imagine at this point that they can improve on it much, but it was great, and then lots of um, lots of on ongoing discussions, uh, some formal, uh, some informal, some arranged, some impromptu, uh, in the grocery store aisles, and while you're grabbing your coffee, you get uh, tapped on the shoulder, lots of as as we all do. So, I guess that's about it for the month. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Savage. Uh, Mayor Snow, may I direct to Councillor Andrew? Certainly. Um, just a question on the King's Transit Authority. Do we have any kind of sense of what next year's 
changed it. What next year's budget That's all right. is going to look like? If any indication of if, if they're going to end up in a deficit position or what what we can expect as in terms of budget? Um, if unless things went uh, <laughs> well, I. I'm reluctant to go because we haven't had a meeting since uh, for quite a while, and I and I think um, our new CAO needs to get caught up on matters around King's Transit. Um, I would say, as it looks right now, yeah, we will be in a deficit position, um, but but I think there's enough things on the table uh, that that could potentially change. That King's Transit could, um, and I, I don't know how much I really allowed to say oh. at this point there's a lot of dreaming going on with King's Transit and and I think there's been uh, good reason for concern and we've had some um, some requests come from King's Transit before this council um, in, in one in particular that we declined because of uh, a long history of issues there and um, I think there's a real heart to try to say okay how do we reimagine and re-envision this thing so I, I I'm hopeful that um, that the leadership uh, the authority is, is such that we could have a very different service, more effective, more efficient, uh, more cost effective as well, um, moving into the next year. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I can pass on more information than that, but sure. we have no, not, no, we have also no. not had a meeting for, um, okay. for, for quite a while. Sure. Okay. Councillor Bolland. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Andrew, there was an announcement on the radio about two weeks ago about a funding announcement. Do you have anything to share about that? Nope. There was no official correspondence with uh, with any of us. Really? No. So King's Transit was awarded thousands of dollars to buy buses. So you're not aware of that? I'm aware that there are. It was on K Rock and the local radio. Well, I don't think that's new information. I think it's it's new information in that it's out on the radio, but that doesn't mean it's new information. Well, it was announced two weeks ago. I thought you might know more yeah, about well, it. Well, we haven't met as a. Uh, there's no emails that I've received. Uh, I was aware of a possibility, um, but as you know, with that kind of funding, you never know until the until the checks in, in hand. Um, so uh, I I don't. Uh, know what radio station you listen to but I didn't hear it on <laughs> <I> CBC. <laughs> well. All right. Thank you. I, I think uh, councillor I would ask in the future if you have issues with my uh, um, my attendance to my uh, my position with the uh, authority that you start to maybe ask me those questions. King's Hi, Transit is in Hi, King's Hi, Transit. Hi, May I please speak? Well, this is the second meeting in a row that I've been, you know, dragged out on this matter. We have not had any meetings. King's Transit has not met. Thank so you. So I don't know what more you Thank want. Thank you. That's all you have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maxwell. All right. Our next uh, report is Councillor Ballin, please. Um, Valley Waste, we met on the 20th this past week. We had a record three and a half hour long meeting. Um, Remembrance Day, uh, Cenotaph Parade, what a great weather that day. I mean, I'd never seen a, as many residents out as we had on the 11th. Very well attended, uh, great greetings by Mayor Snow and other guest speakers and community. Um, NSFM conference, my 14th conference. Um, the highlight for me personally was a meeting with other board members, um, with six provincial cabinet ministers, that was on Tuesday uh, afternoon at 1 o'clock. And we talked about things from roads to environmental concerns and policing. It was uh, neat. And of course, the networking with other councillors from other municipal units on best practices and, and what's working um, in their units, et cetera, was uh, really good. Um, Valley Waste syn uh, synopsis, our typical staff and committee reports. We had an in-camera in session on a former member, which took most of the morning. Um, an external staffing review is being done with conclusions being brought to us and to the CEOs approximately the end of February to look at our staffing levels. Um, Bylaw enforcement report came in, indicated 12 instances of illegal dumping, uh, such as bags of garbage in the ditches in Colebrook, tires on rims on the side of the road in Waterville, uh, bags of unsorted waste dumped behind a superstore in Kingston. And I've also distributed for everybody for some light bedtime reading their monthly communications report. And 
I attended the opening of the Tides Contemporary Art Gallery, the ribbon cutting, a ribbon slicing, chopping, <laughs> and uh, a great attendance of artists and art enthusiasts. It was a full house, and that was hosted by Society Chair Bob Hainstock. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, last council was October 28th, last CAC November the 12th. November the 20th, I attended the Kempel Water Commission. Um, I put this in before we had the meeting, uh, but unless something drastic happens, Kempel Water Commission meetings are fairly quick. Um, I attended uh, an SFM conference November 5th to the 8th. Um, quite often at, at the conference, and I don't have a report as such, um, you often find one or two things that you're interested in, but the, the networking and the meeting and the uh, um, getting to know what other councils are doing or not doing uh, is quite interesting. Um, November the 12th was the initial meeting, the meet and greet with Kelly Rice, our new CAO. Um, November the 15th, Kempo Police Commission. Um, We've begun a review of our uh, Commission Code of Conduct. Um, we received a report on safety and security of uh, Town Hall, which we've already, uh, we've already gone through. Um, we've received a report on uh, options for dispatch, and they're, they're here. We're gonna be talking about them uh, later on in, a, in an in-camera session, but um, they're all here. Um, other points that we talked about were the crosswalks. I believe the day that we had this meeting, the night before, um, someone had been struck not, not bad, um, uh, or sorry, they, they weren't hurt bad, but on the, uh, the crosswalk by the NSLC, and of course, since then, we've got the, uh, the orange flags. I, I think the orange flags are a good idea. I don't know whether the orange flags will be a benefit there, because the problem there is people are looking west and they see a car coming by the church and they want to gun it so they, and, and they're not, it's not a matter of the people could be wearing blinking neon signs, um, if, but they're, they're cons. But I, 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 I do think that uh, bringing attention to that, uh, that is good. Um, it was also brought up about, um, the data coming from the radar signs. So the signs that we see on Belcher and Chester and Park Street, um, they can, right now, uh, since we bought the signs, it's a free service and I think it's free for a year. They can download the data to say, this is how, how fast people are going. Um, after that ends, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's wireless and they've got to actually drive to the sign to get it. But um, just because of the placement of the signs, they didn't have the uh, any data from them. But I'm sure that uh, Chief Chiquetto will uh, will uh, have the data um, coming in. Uh, new pr new projects of dispatch and town hall security, and that um, your worship is my report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Savage. Thank you, you have worship. Something? Um, uh, Deputy Mayor, just a question around yes. that going left there onto Main Street mm -hmm. between Main and Webster. I, if, if we wanted to create a bylaw where you simply can't go left, I know that on a one way you can go left on a red, yep. but I'm sure we have the, the ability here at, at and, council and that level. Was, that was discussed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think they're trying this again. It's, it's a matter of it's, it's not, they're not seeing them. Because they're looking to the right. Because they're looking mm -hmm. to the right, and it's it's just I've even mm. been, and I've I've actually fallen prey to it um, when you're sort of in a daze and you're just mm. following the car. When the car in front of you has an opportunity to go, mm -hmm. I've caught myself almost pulling out, going, Ooh. right, right, yes. should have been paying attention. So, yeah, my thought is exactly that. Yeah, we end the left turn on yeah. the red yes. on on um, Webster coming on to Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. It's not that big of a problem because mm -hmm. you're looking right, right, both ways. Exactly. Um, okay. But no, that's okay. that's not a great intersection. Thank you. Yep. Your Worship. 
Certainly. If I might, just on that point, you have to remember you have a traffic authority, and that's the traffic authority's job. It's not to say that others can't suggest to the traffic authority okay. that those things can be looked at, but that is the traffic authority's okay. job. Not, not this no. body. Of and that's no. where it is right now. Okay. With the traffic mm -hmm. yep. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And moving on to Councillor Maxwell, please. Okay, yes. Um, on October 30th, I uh, served at the Anglican Church Turkey Supper, and as usual, it was a, a wonderful turnout and great meal, and at that event, I accumulated lots of fitness steps, so that was a plus for me there. On October 31st, I attended the Annapolis Valley Trails Coalition uh, meeting, and I'll report on that in a bit. Uh, November 15th, I attended police commission meeting, and Councillor Gerard has just, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Gerard has just given his report. So. November 19th, I attended the KCA PTA, and I'll give a report on that in a few minutes. On November 19th, I attended the Remax uh, Stockings Were Hung event, one of their events. They're, this is a great valley wide Remax event by Donna Conrad and her team to collect items and that will be used to fill Christmas stockings for selected families throughout the valley. And there's different events uh, taking place in each community. Um, on November 2nd, I attended the Remax party in the pumpkin patch, which was a wonderful fall event for children, again put on by Donna Conrad and her Remax team. There was cookie decorating, face painting, games, and the children just loved it. Donna and her REMAX team are a fantastic uh, community supporters. November 11th, I attended the Remembrance Day ceremony at Memorial Park, a beautiful day for the ceremony, which uh, Councillor Bond has, uh, has talked about. Um, quite unusual, so very nice to have that. Great attendance there at that event. And, and I was particularly pleased to see so many young people taking part and being involved in that event. November 13th, I attended the Kenfield Historical Society meeting. Um, this meeting showcased Laura Churchill Duke, who read portions of her new novel, Two Crows Sorrow, and also discussed Kenfield history and uh, Kenfield and area history relevant to the book. And this was a fantastic event and very well attended as well. November 16th, I attended the Maritime Cider Express one year anniversary. Um, camaraderie cake and celebration for Maritime Cider's first year anniversary. Here's hoping for many more successful years. Um, November 6th to 8th I attended the NSM Fall Conference and I have listed the sessions I attended, attended there. It was a, a good conference. Um, I find it much more worthwhile than the Spring Conference. Um, my expenses are online for anyone to view and I think that the highlight for me in this uh, this particular conference and something I felt very um, good about was uh, the chance to connect with <coughs> councillors from other neighboring municipalities and discuss uh, procedures and things that are done, differences in one area to the, to the other. So I found that very, very useful. Um, so I'll move on to my committee reports. Annapolis Valley Trails Coalition. Um, there was a lot of storm damage along our Harvest Moon Trail, Trailway, and uh, grants to help with repairs have been received from the Off-Highway Vehicle Infrastructure Fund and the Community Culture and Heritage um, Department. The coalition received funding for the Harvest Moon Trail brochure, and so that will be available very soon, um, and geocaching, which is uh, a, an activity that can be done along the whole trail. The group is going to have uh, the coin, and this is part of the geocaching um, activity, uh, is going to have the, the coin made up with all the DAR stations on one side of the coin and uh, the logos uh, of the Annapolis Valley Trails Coalition on the other. And they're hoping for a launch for the geocaching along the trail will happen by May. The Harvest Moon Trail brochures will be out the 1st of January and are going to the VICs. Uh, we're, they're going to the VICs first and then uh, more widely distributed a little later. Work is continuing on defining the route for the western loop of the Great Trail. The Annapolis Valley Trails Coalition will host the Nova Scotia Trail Conference in November 2020. So that might be an event that several uh, people on council might be interested in. Uh, KCA PTA, uh, this group along with the uh, many parents who volunteer their time are awesome 
it's just amazing to see this group in action. The students, teachers, and our community are very fortunate to have such a dedicated group. The Town of Ken Kenfield Winter Events Flyers will be going home in the students' report cards, so we're getting a wide distri distribution there. Parent-teacher event will be held on Thursday this week. The new lunch program is progressing fairly well. The bills at this time are tight and requests for funding have been sent out to local businesses. Donations of money or food to this program would be a big help. A skate drive will take place at the end of January. Um, the group going skating this year are primary to grade twos. Um, so looking for, for skates for people that don't have them, but it, that would be for any, any age level. And of course, you know, some kids have very big feet, so. Seven grants uh, were given to, were approved uh, for teachers um, to the tune of $2,797 um, by the PTA. And these monies will be used for various classroom materials. And uh, so that group continues to, to fundraise and doing wonderful things. And that's my report. Excellent. Thank you very much. Councillor Savage. Okay, so uh, last council meeting attended was October 28th and the last CSC was November 12th. November 13th, I, I attended the Investment Advisory Committee where we reviewed the reports and recommendations with our investment advisor from TD Wealth. We're just north of 13 million. Our money weighted net was 11.64% against the balanced income of 10.86. <clears throat> November 5th to the 8th, I attended the NSFM and I do have uh, a report and I did not attach it and I don't have it so I'll just report on one thing uh, I attended uh, all of the conference but there was a speaker uh, Bill Carr spoke about a deeper service and a call to a higher level and he spoke about people in government um, civil servants as well as elected officials and how we can get caught up sometimes in the mania of how busy things get but we always have to remember that we are there to serve the uh, residents of the respective communities where we are elected. So I found it a, a very, very good opening session and uh, I will attach my report in my next one. Um, November the 8th, I attended the art opening at the Tides Contemporary Opens, a uh, not-for-profit that features the work of more than a dozen uh, established and emerging artists from Kings County and Southwest Nova. The gallery coordinator and society chair, Bob Hainstock, is behind this new image to the gallery and it's a very, very exciting for our town and it was a great opening as, uh, as the other councillors have noted and uh, nice to see that in our town. November the 9th, I traveled over to the Sable Shortbread opening. Um, the same day was the Lily Pond uh, grand opening and uh, both new additions to our community and happy to have them here. November the 11th, as the other, my other councillors have mentioned, it was a great day for the Remembrance Day service to uh, pay homage to the veterans and the weather was lovely. Uh, November the 12th, they attended the meet and greet with our new CAO Rice. And uh, November the 20th, <clears throat> that was a uh, highlight of my month really, it was the Kentville Volunteer Fire Department in conjunction with Bell Let's Talk campaign hosted a joint event in bringing a $15,000 donation um, uh, from to the TEMA Foundation. And the TEMA Foundation is committed to helping first responders find assistance they require as they experience and view challenging situations. It was quite a sight to see with all the fire departments. I think they were as far reaching as HRM, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just thanks for your continued service and please know there's always a resource in, in TEMA. It was a great day, absolutely. And that is my very short, concise report. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Councillor Pulsifer. Uh, yes. <coughs> um, last council meeting attended October 28th and last um, CAC meeting November the 12th. Um, I did not have any committee meetings during this period, so that's kind of short. Um, I will report just a bit on the November conference, November 5th to the 8th. Uh, it was held at the, um, the Weston in Halifax. Uh, this year's theme, Leading the Change, focused on uh, how to be successful in approaching the province to achieve success with our top priorities. 
Uh, one of the highlights, as Councillor Savage mentioned, was the keynote speaker, Bill Carr. And uh, he spoke about elected or employed civil servants and that we have uh, an amazing opportunity to serve and serve deeply to our community, our families, and all who will come afterwards. He referenced a quote by Billy Lewis, which stated, quote, we have to open ourselves to question whether the ways we have always dealt with things are good enough, end of quote. And uh, attended other sessions, such as asset management and successful partnership between municipalities and First Nation communities. Um, a few more. It was um, a great conference, and I just feel it's really beneficial to attend these. They uh, they help for us to learn new ideas and network with fellow councillors and towns, and so it's always it's always great to go to those. Um, October 30th, I attended the Ghost Walk in Kenville. It was the final one of the season. Uh, the format was a bit different. Instead of walking around the town, the stories were told within the Cornwallis Inn and the King's Courthouse Museum. Ghosts from Wolfville, Hansport, Wolfville, Wolfville, Hansport, oh, I got uh, <laughs> Wolfville there twice, but anyway, and Windsor joined with some Kentville ghosts to make for a wonderful season finale. Thanks to Jerome and uh, the actors from Center Stage who always make this event such a success. November 8th, I attended the Tides uh, Contemporary Art Gallery opening as well. <coughs> uh, new gallery operating under a different model, so using a cooperative format, it was an exciting opening. November 11th, Remembrance Day, um, it, was a, it was a lovely morning to walk there. No wind, no rain, no snow, it was, it was lovely. Hundreds came to remember those who served our country over the years. November the 12th, uh, we had a lunch meeting with CAO, our new CAO, Kelly Rice. Um, welcome to the town of Kentville, Kelly. Um, I had no committee to report on, so I'll just move on to a few of the other town events. November 12th, I attended the Soup Fest put on by the Community Soup Kitchen. It was a fun and delicious event that featured 10 local restaurants who competed for the best soup, the most creative soup, and the best display. Uh, we tasted all the soups and voted on the winners in each category. The Kentville Fire Hall was filled with soup tasters, and I'm sure everyone had a wonderful time supporting this community cause. The port, I believe, was the chosen best soup, I believe. I don't know if anyone else was there to join in or not, but anyway. November 13th, uh, I attended the Kentville Historical Society's annual general meeting. It was held at Kings Riverside Court with over 40 people in attendance um, there to uh, listen to our guest speaker, Laura Churchill Duke, who spoke on her new book, Two Crows Sorrow. Uh, has a significant historical relevance to Kentville and surrounding area. Uh, November the 16th, I attended the Maritime Express first anniversary. Um, it's a nice event, exciting time over there. Um, it was supposed to be cake, I missed the cake, it wasn't ready, so I had to leave <laughs> with no cake. <laughs> I also attended Devour, but I guess I forgot I didn't put that down. That was also fun. Uh, and I, this isn't down on my report either, but I, I just wanted to mention that I popped over to the Farmer's Market in their new space, which is at the Lions Club Hall. And um, we're busy over there and lots of room for the vendors and uh, certainly well worth popping over to see their new, new location. They seemed happy there and lots of room to move around. and. Yeah, it was nice. So that's my report. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, my report. Uh, so on the 24th of October, I attended the Valley Wren uh, Board of Directors uh, meeting. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's business as usual. And I have to say that our Valley Wren is, uh, is working uh, very hard uh, um, looking at uh, any economic uh, opportunities uh, that arise. Um, as you know, I have become a new board member on the Municipal Finance Corporation, and uh, we had a teleconference uh, for the fall debentures, and I think it was uh, $83 million uh, that uh, went like that, uh, I have to say. 12th of November, I attended the Nova Scotia Quality of Life Leadership Team meeting, and you will recall in the summer that you may or may not have received a, um, um, a 
a survey to do quality of life. Uh, anyway, it turns out that Nova Scotia had the highest uh, percentage of response rate in Canada for this type of survey. And, uh, and the folks at uh, the University of Waterloo are over the moon uh, with the amount of data that, uh, that we have. And we should actually be seeing this data sometime in December and then uh, it will enable us to, uh, to be able to, uh, to use it. Um, Water Commission meeting, uh, as uh, Deputy Mayor said, it was uh, fast and furious. And now that we have uh, we have an engineer on board, uh, our financial and engineering report uh, came along quite uh, quickly. So some of the fun things uh, that I got to do: uh, the Kentville Girl Guides, the actual the Rangers, uh, the leaders and retired leaders actually sponsored an amazing race event in Kentville for high school students because they were on an in-service afternoon off. So they had, uh, they had eight teams and they had eight different places that they had to go to and what the Rangers had done is they had gone around town and got a bunch of uh, just swag from, uh, from different businesses. So each, uh, each one of the, uh, the participants uh, received something at the end of it. But uh, the kids had, had a lot of fun and there was actually one team of boys who were from Canning and the hardest place that they had to find was Town Hall because they had no clue where Town Hall in Kentville was. But uh, anyway, so they were not the winners. I just want to put that out there. Um, devour uh, the Mayor's bike ride uh, from Wolfville to Kentville to Aldershot to Stars Point and back to Wolfville. I didn't ride because it was hateful that day, uh, but I did ride my car. Uh, or drive my car out to each one of the spots and I volunteered as a uh, water pourer. So I was pretty good at that. Uh, 28th of October, of course, we had the Marlins swim, te swim team in here uh, for a special celebration uh, because they had such a great year. Um, the KCA pumpkin drop. So annually, uh, the KCA pumpkin drop is held on the day after Halloween because uh, the kids are already wired with, uh, with enough sugar on that day that it seems like the great time to do it. The problem was is that the winds were too high so we had to delay the event until Monday but I'm going to tell you that didn't stop any of the fun and, uh, and we had two pumpkins survive and uh, one of them was Mr. West's class uh, but the other was the grade twos so the grade twos took it away uh, because they were just uh, they were so cute. Uh, and then I attended uh, the KCA Remembrance Day uh, event and they just do, do such an amazing job. Um, from grade four to grade eight were in the room. They had their choir. They have a uh, an guard of honor. And uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. So as uh, Councillor Maxwell said, uh, we had lots of kids out to Remembrance Day. And I think that these, these events that are happening in our schools are really what are precipitating it uh, because it was, uh, it was really uh, wonderful. As everyone has already mentioned, Tide's Contemporary Gallery is open. Absolutely wonderful. 16th of November, I attended uh, Kings Riverside Court to bring greetings uh, from the town. Uh, on the 19th of November, um, there was another doctor here with, uh, with his, uh, his wife, and they were from Saskatchewan. And Kenfield is, uh, is their first choice, so uh, trust me, I was in sell, sell, sell mood. And... Um, Anyway, it, uh, it was just uh, a, a really great opportunity. Uh, the 20th of November, as uh, Councillor Savage has already mentioned, uh, the Kentville Fire Department. There were uh, 15 different fire departments here for this event. And uh, you know, it was, uh, it was really, really great. And uh, the emergency vehicles uh, did a drive around town. So if you're wondering what all the sirens about, uh, that's, exactly, uh, that's exactly what it was. Um, my trip report for the, um, the conference is, uh, is attached and, uh, and as well the, uh, the agenda is there for anyone who's, uh, who's interested in it. And that is my report. So if I could have a motion to accept the member of council's reports as presented. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that members of council reports be, adopt be adopted as presented. All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. We have no correspondence tonight and we have no new business. Uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment. 
and we'll move into an in-camera as we do have uh, both legal and land business uh, which must be conducted in the closet in a closed session so we require a motion to go into the closed session to discuss the agenda items and there may be there will be recommendations coming from this discussion but we will not be returning to Facebook live upon completion of the presentation if I could have a motion please thank you thank you it's been moved and seconded that council move into a closed session all those in favor those opposed motion is carried thank you and the time is 8 15 close enough 8 13 all right do you need a uh, biological break while we close down